Speaker of the Evening, Mr. Right. Right. Speech is the only one we have this evening, uh, Lloyd Smith. Uh, Lloyd Smith, uh, Smith's speech last week was his 120th manual speech. The question he hears most frequently is, where do you get the ideas for your speeches? That's an important question, one that the ancient Greek and Roman rhetoricians is that oh. Enough? Oh, yeah? <laughs> thought about, too. In fact, in Bikyo, the process of developing and refining one's topic and the method of presenting it to the audience is the first element of five classic canons of rhetoric and Cicero. Thanks a lot, Cicero. Cicero. Cicero described in about 50 BC. One of the models in the Toastmasters Better Speaking series of education presentations is devoted to the invention phrase of creating a speech. Tonight, Lloyd Smith will present selecting your topic. Hey, Lloyd, how do you want to tackle it? Uh, 12, 14, 15, I guess. Okay. It's true. One of the things I get asked most often is where do you come up with the ideas for your speeches? And the reality is, I've never really thought much about that because ideas are everywhere. And that's really the point of this Toastmasters educational module. If you give it a moment's thought, there are only two possible places you can come up with a topic for a speech. One of them is within yourself. And that's the most obvious one. Now here's a weird thing. If you think for a moment about some of the speeches you've heard in this room or elsewhere that you like the most, they were probably personal speeches, personal experiences that other people talked about. Travels they've been on skills they have, adventures they've had, fed, challenges they face, that kind of thing. And the reality is that all of us think other people are just about the most interesting things in the world. We want to hear about them. But all of us also think that we, personally, are boring, and nobody wants to hear about us. Well, if you think about that for a second, it can't possibly be true. I mean, everybody thinks that, that all of you think you are boring and uninteresting, but you think everybody else is interesting. Not possible. So give a talk to your own personal experiences. In the module, they mentioned several things. One of them is your interests, things like hobbies, sports, travels, experiences, adventures, whatever, things that you've done in your life. We've heard lots of those in here, if you think about it. The most recent one was probably Julie Marzu's speech about her traveling, how uh, she packs her, her uh, backpack and all that with like a clown car with all that stuff coming out of it over and over and over and over. You know, we've heard a lot about Joe's paragliding and, and uh, parachuting and whatnot, that sort of thing. Those are perfect topics for speeches, and they're things that, that you just have inside of you. That's the big advantage to a personal topic for a speech is that you probably don't have to do any research. You already know it. You know? And if you think about it, you are the world's greatest expert on what happened to you. So <laughs> there's nothing to worry about. You just talk about what you know. They also mentioned things like your like careers, businesses, uh, occupations, whatever that you may you may have had in your life. They mentioned your family. That one can be a little tricky. Uh, lots of people aren't comfortable talking about weird stuff that's happened in their family. <laughs> On the other hand, that makes for pretty good speaking. <laughs> <laughs> your crazy Uncle Louie who you keep up in the attic or whatever. You know. uh, but they mention things like your ancestors, family history, that sort of stuff. You know, I remember hearing a speech in another club about a woman whose ancestors literally came over on the Mayflower. And she knew it, which struck me as kind of amazing. Uh, finally, they mentioned education, things like experience, educational experiences you've had at various sorts classes you've taken, subjects you're interested in, that kind of thing. There's a wealth of stuff out there. So all you have to do is just pick something that you have done. And the odds are, everybody else will think it's just fascinating. But it really is true that most of us think we're boring. There's a woman in the Electric Toasters Club who just mentioned in passing during one of her speeches that she had climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. And she seemed surprised that all of us found that interesting or unusual. <laughs> oh, yeah, like everybody used to expect that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, if you don't find topics inside of yourself, there's only one other place you can find them, and that's outside of yourself, what you might broadly think of as research or reference materials. I don't really mean that in the research sense, as if you were going to school and producing a, a scholarly paper or a document or something like that. That's probably, well, uh, 
for one thing, that would be a very difficult way of doing up a speech, but also probably not so suitable to the kind of speeches that we do. However, in the sense of research and whatnot, the easiest and best thing to do is probably what I've always done. I have a file box, and in that file box, I have a bunch of stuff. And what that is is just things I found on online and thought, oh, that's kind of odd or interesting or unusual. Newspaper articles, magazines, art clippings, whatever. <clears throat> like here's one on CS Cure Gas. Might be a speech in that someday. I've been gassed three times in my life. chemical <laughs> 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 formula and that crap. Uh, this one, I'm thinking about this for a possible humorous speech, the London Beer Flood. Has anyone ever heard of that? Yeah, 1814, a gigantic vat of beer broke. <laughs> and 500,000 gallons of beer went downhill and drowned nearly 1,000 people. <laughs> well, that's similar to the great Boston <laughs> molasses <laughs> flood, which occurred in 1919 when a gigantic <laughs> vat of molasses broke in Boston Harbor and killed 50 people. Uh, here we have a list of the top 10 cele dead celebrities and what they've earned. I'm not sure what to make out of that, but it struck me as interesting. <laughs> Ah, the history of the KKK in Washington. Do all of you know that in the 1920s there were Ku Klux Klan marches down Wenatchee Avenue? There were. Yeah. Uh, coincidence, whether or not there is such a thing as coincidence, uh, believe it or not, philosophers are divided on that. Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, there's a little bit of stuff here, probably another hundred years worth of speeches. About once a year, uh, when the thing gets too full, I throw out the stuff that I'm no longer able to do. The point is that you can find stuff everywhere. And if the reaction you have when you hear something or see something on TV or see it in a newspaper, oh, that's kind of odd. I wonder why that is. It's probably a good speech topic. Answer that question. Why is it odd and interesting and you've got your speech? The other thing to do is to keep copies of your old speeches or your outlines, manuscripts, or whatever, because you can always go into reruns if need be. Um, I've done this a couple of times. I think my third or fourth competent communicator. I picked speeches that I had done in the past that came out okay, but I thought could be better. You probably have that experience where you sit down after a speech and say, wow, I should have done whatever. It would have been better. So I did. Anyway, I re-ran 10 speeches. I didn't mention that at the time because I thought some of you would think it was tacky or lazy. It's actually kind of difficult to redo a speech and not have it come out the same way as the first time. Now, however you come up with the topic, there are four things they mention that you really need to do, and I think these are important. You have to think about your alignments. Obviously, if you're dealing with a group of nine-year-olds, you're going to give one kind of speech. If you're dealing with a group of college professors, you're going to give an entirely different kind of speech. You really have to know your audience. Now, in this group, you do. I mean, we're, we all pretty much know each other by now, so it's not a very big thing. But you have to think, you know, what educational background does your audience have? What are they capable of understanding? Uh, do they have any strong or odd beliefs? That sort of thing. And it really is important to know that. That will dictate how you create the speech out of whatever topic you pick. The second thing you have to think about is the occasion itself. Now, for our Toastmasters meetings, that's not a big deal. The occasion is the, the meeting. But if you're speaking to an outside group, if there is a reason for the meeting, some, some observance or something like that, you probably want a speech that's tied into that. You also need to think about when you are speaking. I don't know if any of you have had the experience of speaking right after the group has had a meal. But people get sleepy. And so that dictates the kind of speech. You probably don't want to give a densely packed speech about the philosophy of logical positivism or something like that to an after lunch crowd, you know, because you will put them to sleep. Those of you who have seen our Toastmasters conferences know that that's a factor. For example, in a couple of weeks down in the afternoon, the speech contest is right after dinner, like immediately after dinner. Well, you've got to keep the group awake. You know, that, that's a challenge. I think at Coeur d'Alene, wasn't it right after lunch that you had to get up and do? Probably. Yeah, and you were first speaker, you know, and that, that really is, presents a challenge, too. Right? Uh, the third thing you need to think about is your own abilities. In other words, it's great to pick a topic that's challenging, but you've got to think, do you know enough about it 
that you can actually do it some justice. For example, would any of us in here want to stand up in front of a room full of doctors and talk about cancer research? Not unless you're a doctor who knows something about cancer research, because two things could go wrong. First, they won't listen to you if they don't believe you know what you're talking about. Second, you won't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so you really have to think about that. Uh, it isn't that you have to have a lot of expertise to give a speech, but you've got to have enough that the audience believes that you know what you're talking about. You have to at least know the basics in order to, to fake it convincingly, if need be. By the way, don't ever hesitate to fake it if you have to, but it shouldn't be just totally randomly faked. You should have at least a little bit there. Finally, this is the big one. If you forget everything else I say, remember this. You have to narrow any topic down a lot. I mean, give it a moment's thought. Suppose you're really interested in World War II, so you decide, I'll give a speech about World War II. Well, there are entire shelves of library books written about World War II, you know, probably dozens and dozens of them if you went into a, a good college library somewhere. Even individual battles in World War II, like say the D-Day invasion or something, there are hundreds and hundreds of books written about it. It's not likely you can do a topic like that justice in a five to seven minute speech. If you give it a moment's thought, if you speak at a more or less average rate, you're probably in the 125 to 150 word a minute range. So a five to seven minute speech is going to be, say, seven to 800 words, give or take a few. If you were to type that out, that's about a page and a half. You're going to talk about World War II in a page and a half? I, I don't think so. You know, you really have to narrow it down. That would probably be a very poor topic for a typical club speech. There might be a particular aspect of World War II that you might be able to, to, to make work. Now, the good news about that is that if you have a topic that does not have a lot, I mean, a tremendous research basis, it might work because you only need to fill five to seven minutes. That's only seven or eight hundred words. You can probably come up with a page and a half or nearly anything if you put your mind to it. You know. So those are things to think about, the time limit. Most people I see who get in trouble trying to do a speech have done one of two things. They've either got a topic that's so gigantic they can't get a grip on it. Very frequently when people go way, way over time, that's what's happened. Their topic is just too big. And the trouble you get into about a topic you care about is that you can't cut stuff out. You, you care about it. it. It's important and you really need to talk about this and you really need to talk about this and you really need to talk about this and the next thing you know you've talked 20 minutes. And so you have you can't fall in love with your topic. You get, if you have to chop it in half, then chop it in half. It's just the way it goes. Give a different speech another time about the other half, and it'll be fine. The last thing I want to mention is that the selection of topic may actually not be nearly as important as most people think it is. My college debate partner, Alex, did expository speaking as one of his individual contest events. That's a, a speech to inform. You explain, describe, illustrate, or demonstrate any person, thing, idea, or concept. It includes demonstrations, but also just classic speeches to inform. Well, the rule back then was that if you won a contest, you had to retire that speech and write a new one. And Alex could win those contests. We went to a lot of them. So he had to come up with a new speech about once every couple of weeks. And the way he did it was that he went to the library, grabbed the volume of the Encyclopedia Britannica off the shelf at random, opened the book at random, stuck his finger on, on a part of the page at random, and that was his topic, no matter what. He didn't care. He didn't think it was important. He thought all he needed to do was to come up with a good speech about that topic, and he would rather spend his time working on the speech than wandering around trying to figure out what to talk about. See, there are only so many minutes that you can work on a speech, right, because you have a real life and a job and whatnot. So don't spend any of them worrying about the topic. <laughs> After you come up with the topic by pointing to it at random, spend all your time thinking about the speech, because that's the important part. What are you going to say about that? And the way he was doing it, by pointing to the encyclopedia, he already had the stuff. I mean, so he had one about cotton, I, I remember once. He had one about cheese. Uh, one, there was another one about air conditioning. I mean, it was just random stuff. And he was good at you know, developing and making interesting speeches. So what's the bottom line here? First of all, selecting the topic seems to cause a lot of anxiety, and it probably should not. 
everybody has got personal experiences and backgrounds and knowledge and beliefs and whatnot that you could talk about. So just do one of those things. If you have to research, just find stuff out in the world. Stuff that you find online, magazines, newspapers, TV shows, you know, events you go to in public, whatever. Just pick something and talk about it. Especially if it's something that makes you think, oh, that's kind of odd. Why is that? Answer that question. Why is it a little bit interesting or odd and you'll have your speech? Don't worry too much about it. Worry about making whatever the topic is into something that's interesting. And you'll do fine. If need be, you can write my file. <laughs> Mr. Postmaster. <laughs> Are we have one minute? Yes. I just have a question for Lloyd. Oh, sure. What's a dictionary? Pardon me? What's a dictionary? What's a dictionary? Well, they used to have these books, you know, with lots of words in it. Yeah. <laughs>